Hello, everyone. My name is Omar Kashad. I'm one of the adult services librarians here at the Carroll Stream Public Library. Uh, thank you for coming out today. Today's session will be all about uh, how to do research on companies either while you have an interview or also while you uh, may be interested in just finding job prospects. And so what I mean by that is um, if you got the interview with the company, I've According to when I've looked through a bunch of our job search books or, or job seeker books, it recommends that you, you know, find out as much as you can about the company because they may very well ask you, what do you know about us as one of the questions in the interview process? Or on top of that, you may also say to yourself, well, you know, I, maybe I'm looking for work or maybe I went through the job and career accelerator module about how to use my, about how they took my interests or my skills. They found me a list of professions they think I might be good for. And so, um, and so what that means is that, you know, you may find a position you're interested for in a field you want to apply for. And you may say to yourself, well, great, I found that. Now, how do I find companies that match this field? And so you can do both of those through Reference USA slash Data Axle. So how do we get there? Well, if you want to know, the, there's multiple ways to get to it, um, to our business resources, which is what this is listed under, uh, or our employment resources. I detailed all of those in a previous video for Job and Career Accelerator, which is on our library's YouTube channel. So I'm not going to go into all of them today. I'm just going to choose one of them. But if you want to know the different ways to get to our um, our, our employment resources, you know, please watch that video. But for now, this is our library's website, cslibrary.org. I'm going to go to learn, which is right here, and then I'm going to choose all topics. When I take that, click that, I'm taken to a list of all of our database resources. They're organized by subject. I could go from one subject to the next, or I could look at all the topics. One of them is jobs. But since we're using Reference USA, or as it's now called Data Axle, I'm just going to go ahead and go there directly using this alpha list option over here on the right. I'm going to click that. All of our databases appear in alphabetical order. And now I'm going to scroll down to, um, I'm going to scroll down to the, to the R's because we've chosen to still call it Reference USA. As I said, they just recently renamed branded, but a lot of people still know them as Reference USA, which we'll see out here on the right hand side. But we've also put data axle in parentheses. Why they decided to rename themselves, that's entirely up to them. They just decided to rebrand and now they've chosen a completely different name, but it's still the exact same site and everything that uh, that it was. What is Reference USA or Data Axle? What do they do? Well, as it says right here in the little description, you can search for people and businesses, including doctors, and conduct market research. If any of you are familiar with, or if any of you have heard of another of another product called A to Z databases, this is basically a competitor product. A lot of what they do is the same. There are some minor differences, which I won't go into, but if someone says, oh, well, did you use A to Z databases to look up this information? You can say, no, I used Reference USA. They're a competitor of A to Z, but again, their data is largely the same. So I'm just gonna click here where it says Reference USA slash data axle. And there's a step here, which we are skip, which I already did earlier today. When you click that link to go to data axle, be, because we're paying for this for our cardholders on your behalf, when you there's a step middle step here where it's going to ask you for your library card number and your PIN number. So you will need that information in order to get to this resource. Um, your, your library card number you will type in with no spaces and your PIN number could be one of many things, but chances are it may be the last four digits of your library of card number or else whatever phone number you have on file here. So again, if, if you get to this and you get to that library card spot, you know, again, type it in. If you've lost your library card number, by all means, come and get a new one. Or if you just can't find it uh, through the My Account feature on our website, you can click Forgot My Library Card Number and then it'll email it to you. Or it all, And there's also a I Forgot My PIN Number. You can get that as well. Or you can call us, like, at least for the PIN number part of it. If you've completely forgotten your PIN number, we can reset it for you that's no problem. And then when you log into your online account through the catalog, if you wanted to change it, you could, but you don't have to. So here again is Data Axel or Reference Solutions. Uh, you may possibly see a pop-up that appears right away that just says, we're now Data Axel. We were Reference USA. We're still the same great product. Um, 
what I want to call your attention to before I really launch into my presentation is this option right here, which says webinars. Uh, I would encourage you um, after today's session, if you're like, great, Omar, that's great. I want to learn more about this product. If you click this webinars option, you'll be taken to their webinars page. And we got to scroll down a little bit, but they've got some really good free webinars that they're offering uh, multi, uh, twice weekly um, during the mornings. Um, I won't elaborate his introduction to data axle reference solutions. We probably don't need, it's probably not much important to us, but you know, we've got this search essentials feature where they cover how to use their databases as I'll show you today. If you decide that, you know, I maybe I'm not going to go into the job market, I'm going to start my own business. Well, they've got a whole webinar on how on entrepreneurship, as it says, research for starting, managing and growing businesses, perhaps in a future, uh, whether job club presentation or else, you know, in a, a future business presentation, you know, I, I may actually cover how to use this database specifically for entrepreneurship uh, reasons, but you can watch this video ahead of time and you can learn that all for yourself. This final one may be a particular interest to those of us in the job club today. Uh, job seeking career search strategies. Uh, this one I didn't even know that they offered until I actually clicked their webinar solutions. And so what this showed me is that, you know, they they will, you will learn how to use data actual reference solutions, you know, as part of the job search. You know, they'll cover cover letters, finding references, you know, finding mentors. But this particular last one is what I'll actually be covering a little bit today, which is building data sets of potential employers. And they'll talk about more than just that. So I'd encourage you, to, you know, if this fits in your time slot to uh, to register for it. I don't know if they'll record it and send you a link later, but you know, like I said, this could be helpful for you to watch any one of these webinars or more than one. So yeah, again, that was under the webinars feature. And I'll just go ahead and skip back here to data actual reference solutions because again, we're not going to watch those webinars. That you, again, you can do that on your own time. So data axle. Uh, what I see here is about them is right here what it says at the top. They are the premier source of information for reference and research. They offer accurate data on 62 million businesses and 298 million consumers. We're only going to talk about the businesses module, but maybe in a future webinar, I, I may cover the consumers module. But this is really a good way to learn all you can about for today's session will be all about businesses, uh, whether ones you're interviewing for or ones you're just trying to find as a potential uh, prospect. So again, I'm not gonna go into all of the modules that they have here, um, but the businesses one is what we'll be covering. They've got 62 million businesses as part of that and 3.6 million closed businesses. If you're for some reason moving up to Canada, they do have Canadian businesses listed and they also have US new businesses, which have been established, I believe, at least within the six months, first, within the last six months um, and so on. And the search strategies that I show you in this US businesses module will translate to these other two. So just know that uh, while I won't be covering these, if you decide to use one on your own time, you know, what you can take what you learned in this session on the US businesses module and then use that to then uh, apply it to these other ones. There's also this, uh, I won't go into the white pages at all. They also offer historical businesses, jobs and internships searching as well. This is powered by Indeed.com just as Job and Career Accelerator was. So um, so yeah, if you wanna look up jobs and internships, you can, or you could also do that through Job and Career Accelerator, or you could just go to Indeed.com and do that as well. And I'm not gonna go into healthcare or consumers, lifestyles or US new movers and homeowners, but again, all of these are here for you to look up on your own time. If you wanna know more about it with that, at a glance, you know, you'll click this more information uh, section here as your mouse is over it, and then this sidebar will change. But again, we're under the US businesses module. So what does that tell us? Well, the US businesses module, as it says, has 62 million businesses, including 16 million verified businesses and 46 million unverified businesses. It is the only business database is enhanced with more than 24 million phone calls per year, providing you with the most accurate data possible. What's a verified business? What's an unverified business? We'll find that out as we actually do research uh, into, um, into actually finding a company. Um, and then also it looks like we do have access to the mobile app. I believe that's the case for the library subscription. I can't guarantee that, but it does seem like you could use their mobile app solution as well. 
And towards the end here, um, you could also create a personal account through them. Uh, you don't have to do this in order to use their resources, unlike Job and Career Accelerator, but this might be helpful if you wanted to, as it says, save your searches and search criteria for future list building. So I'll, I'll log in at the end of today's session and show you what that's like. Um, but like I said, for right now, we're just going to focus on the US Businesses module, and I'll go ahead and click this. Now, as I click this, I have two options in front of me. The first one by default that comes up is this quick search option. There's also the advanced search option. Quick search is good for you if you know the name of the company that you are interviewing for, or you just wanna look up on its own merits. So if you knew the name of the company, you could type it in here. Uh, you could also potentially type in the executive names. Maybe, maybe you knew an executive. You don't know where they work now. You could type in that as well. Maybe you'll get results. Um, you could type in the city too, if you want to make it more specific. You could also do the state option. Um, uh, or you could also do the phone number. You can either use one of these fields, so you don't have to necessarily type in the company name if you don't want to. You just have to put data into one of these fields and you'll view the results. I would caution against using this as sort of finding all the businesses in the state. You can do that, but that would probably be better suited in the advanced search option, which again, I will cover in just a little bit later on today. But let's say we know that we're interviewing for company and this company is called Baker and Taylor. Who is Baker and Taylor? Well, they're the company that the library orders a lot of its books through. So I've typed in their name and then I'll click view results in just a moment. But again, if you're looking up a company name, you know, company names could, could be like specific or not specific. It could have company, it could have Inc at the end of it, INC. So I'd say if you search for them using their full name and you don't find it, don't panic or don't take that as being like they're not in here. Sorry, uh, just um, just try and uh, you know try different searches. Maybe just use their their first you know their main name as it were before the ink or or what have you. Try searching for them that way and see if you can find them. Um, but chances are, if you type it incorrectly, it should show up. So I've typed in Baker and Taylor, or in this case, I, I I typed it in before, and Chrome happened to remember that I typed that in. But again, I probably have to type it out the whole time the first time I do it. And now I'm gonna click view results. Now, when I get to view results, I have some options here at the top. If I'm not finding what I'm looking for in this list down here near the middle, I can click this revise search and go back to what I had done and maybe try again, try different company names or, or name variations. I could also do this new search option and just start from scratch if I wanted to. Um, I'm not going to cover what all this means, detail, heat map, summary, charts, etc. A lot of this is really more applicable if you were a business looking for other businesses to do business with. They call that business to business or B2B transactions. Um, again, I'm not going to go into these because chances are as a job seeker, you're not really going to be using any of these options as much aside from maybe the download option where you could download like multiple records if you wanted to. But again, I, I'm not really going to go into any of these. Um, you're welcome to try these on your own time and if when I eventually teach a course on how to uh, use uh, Reference USA as either for entrepreneurs or else business owners, I, I will cover more of these in depth. But um, but from the columns option, we've got multiple columns, uh, company name, Baker and Taylor, looking good, uh, name of, ex of, their, of an executive who works there, their street address, city and state, zip code, phone number, and corporate tree. If I wanted to sort any of these alphabetically, I can just click on the header, on the column header here. So company name will then reorganize this. As didn't do much because they're all called Baker and Taylor. But uh, I could also say, well, you know what? I want to find the Illinois listing and I don't want to look through uh, seven records. So I'm just going to organize this by state. I click city state. Now it's organized alphabetically by state. And I'm going to, here's the good one here, Baker and Taylor out in moments. I'll be covering them shortly. We'll look at their record in a moment. Here's their zip code, 60954. Here's their phone number and corporate tree. Again, this corporate tree, I will cover again more in depth. But again, this final column, you could change it to be something else. You can't change any of these other columns. But with this little down arrow here, I can click this and I could change it to record type, which would go back to that verified and unverified. Uh, the title, 
uh, employees or their number of sales. So I'll, I'll just click sales just to show you that this does indeed change. And here at a glance, I can see what their sales figures are. Um, but again, you know, that's just one option of, of the ones that are here. You can click on different ones of these and see what it gives you back. Now, if I want to look at one individual record, I will just click Baker and Taylor and be taken to it. If I wanted to look at more than one, I could click different arrows here on the side, or I can click this master arrow up here at the top and check mark all of these and then click it again to make them all go away. Uh, what, why does that make a difference? Well, I'll, I'll show you in a moment. If I click more than one, I can then quickly navigate to that other record rather than have to click this and then hit the back button and go back to this list to go to the next record. So uh, what I mean by that is, so I'll just go ahead and click this first, the one I want to go to without moments. If I'd set on the basic search feature, I just want companies in Illinois, this is the only one that would have shown up. But uh, I'll click Baker and Taylor LLC. And uh, you don't see it up here, but if I clicked more than one, it would say in this box up here, it would say record one of however many checkmark boxes I had clicked. And then there would be a little arrow here that I could then thumb over then to the following record. So yeah, that's if you checkmark multiple records and just look up here in this left-hand column below the company name. And then it will again, allow you to quickly parse over to those other records if you want to. So this is their company profile for their location out in Moments. If I want to look at all, look at what 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 topics does this business profile cover? Well, I can see here at a glance location info. Okay, that's this top one. Job listings is down here, and if I go further down this list, I'll see that it covers. It'll have all of these um, topics listed. Now there may not be data for some of these topics, and I'll explain why there may be some areas that don't, but. This is a snapshot of this company. And what I mean by that though is, as I'm looking at this record, what I, what I wanted to tell you at the start is, before we start looking at this is, don't use Reference USA as your only source of information on this company. This is a very good resource for you to use, but again, this is just a snapshot of them. This is not gonna be up to the minute and really no aggregator of this type ever would be because the only place that knows up to the minute information about this company is this company. So Baker and Taylor knows up to the minute information on it. All Reference USA or slash data actual can do is, you know, it'll then use its different data sources to try and update this record. So what I mean by that is use this information, go to the company's website, look through some of our other databases like ABI Inform and use that to then create a whole picture of this company that you can then take with you, whether to the interview process or as you're working on your cover letter. So that's my one word of advice for you. So when I look up here, here's Baker and Taylor. I can see that this is a verified record. So what does that mean? Well, if this, if this arrow turns into the little hand, it lets you know that I can click it. So then this little box pops here on the top right-hand side, and it says that verified records have been through our most stringent compilation processes, including phone verification. These records make up our main business file. Those are verified. That means that the data in here, Reference USA has done as much as it can to make this as accurate as possible. Now, and then there are also their unverified records, which means that they've done their best, but there may be information in here that may be partial and may not be verified like addresses, for example. And then there's closed and out of business. So like I said, if you see unverified, just know that the data in it may not be as accurate as a verified record. But again, this being a snapshot doesn't mean that it's 100% accurate, but again, it's just a way of you to learn more about this company. So we can see they're out on Gladiola Street, they're in Moments, here's their phone number, their fax number, their website, some of their social media outlets, Twitter, Facebook, Indeed. They don't mention LinkedIn, they might have a LinkedIn account, couldn't hurt to look. County, they're out in Kankakee County, metro area of Kankakee, Illinois. Uh, and then other information here, which I won't go into. Uh, job listings, um, again, powered by Indeed.com. So, you know, if you are looking up a company and you see these lists, these job listings, great, they have job listings. If there's nothing listed here, that's okay. Again, as I said earlier, try and go to this company's website and look through their hiring page because they may again be 
uh, hiring, but doing it solely through their website and these aggregators or these collectors of job searches, of job uh, postings like Indeed may not be picking up on it. Um, Oh, here's that corporate tree option over here on the left. Again, I'll, I'll get back to that in a moment. But what's all what's really nice is this industry profile section. The industry profile section, what is, what is SIC? What does NAICS mean? These are classification codes for these companies that they say when they become a company, they report that information to the government and say, you know, the SIC code or the NAICS code, they want everyone to move from SIC to NAICS, but right now both of them are still in active use because SIC has been around for so long. But what you can use this is, you can use this to find out more about how does this company view itself? What do they think that they do and do very well that they figure that this is what the government wants them to know them as and how they want other companies to find them based off of these codes if they want to do business with them. So the SIC code, primarily the primary one for SIC and NAICS, this means this is what they want to be known for and this is really where their bread and butter lies. This is where they do the majority of their business. So you can see for their code, the code, you know, it's there if you want to read it, uh, but that code number is meaningless to me without, you know, looking it up. But what it, but what it really important is the description of said code. So I know that Baker and Taylor is a book dealers and they deal with book dealers and they do wholesale book selling. And I can confirm that is true, having bought books from them. You know, they're exporters, again, wholesalers, book dealers, retail. Does that mean that they um, that they have their own bookstores or that they do business with book sell bookstores? You know, I have to do more research into that, but I, I know that they don't have their own bookstores. They 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 sell to booksellers, you know, like bookstores. Warehouses, not all that informative, federal government contractors. Okay, you know, that could be helpful for you if you if they ask you, do you know if we're federal government contractors? Well, according to this SIC code, they are. Um, NAICS code repeats a lot of what we saw up above. Um, they're a book, periodical, and newspaper merchant wholesaler. Um, they also deal with other miscellaneous durable goods, whatever that means. Uh, they also, again, bookstores. Um, like I said, you'd want to do more research, figure out do they have their own bookstores or do they sell to bookstores? But at least you can see that there. Uh, office administrative services, unclassified establishments are two of the other ones on here. You'll see this unclassified establishments come up a lot. I, I've seen it on other records. Um, there's also a nice little brief blurb here on their business profile. Again, you can read through this and, uh, and also again, do your research, compare it to other sources of information. Like, are they still part of Castle Harlan or are they part of a different company? You know, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, photos, maps, and directions. I'm not going to, if I wanted to see what that this section is, I can click expand. Or if I wanted this business demographics to become smaller, I can click collapse or I can click expand. But we really want this business demographics section open because it's got a very important piece of information on here that will cl clue us in on the data it's providing on their, on their business sales volume and other numbers. What I mean by that is, here's what I want to call your attention to, and is this line right here, which says, what type of business are they? They're private. So what does that mean? Well, in this case, type of business, I can actually click on it. And it tells me that a public business is a publicly traded company. A private business is a privately owned company, and this could be a branch of a public traded company. Because this is private, if you're not familiar with public and private companies, public companies have stock. And because they have stock that the public can buy, they are required to do reporting of their financials to the Security and Exchanges Commission. And that information is then publicly posted for anyone to see. A private company doesn't have to do that because there is no public investment in their company. They're driven entirely by their own profits or possibly also from money they can raise from the banks. What that means is because they're, this company, this particular company is private, because they're not reporting their financials, Baker, uh, Data Axel then has to make estimates on what those financials are as well as other key data points. So that's just something to be aware of. And that's not a knock against them because they're private. They don't want their financials publicly disclosed. 
they do file taxes, but even that isn't publicly posted either. So, you know, really pay attention to this type of business option. It'll let you know about these data points and it will explain why some of this stuff is blank or why some of this information, you know, you, you really gotta think like, okay, well, that's just an estimate. It's not an exact number. Um, so what we can see here is they've is it estimates that they have 870 employees at this location. They very well might, because um, they're they're a pretty large. Uh, knowing from what I've heard, people who've gone there, they're they're a giant book factory, as it were. Stuff comes in, it gets sent right out to libraries and booksellers and all sorts of stuff. So they could very well have 870 employees. Their location sales volume uh, is estimated to be 890 million. Uh, you're really going to want to look more into that and say, well, is that them specifically or is that just, you know, the company, if they're part of a larger organization, maybe that's their sales volume. But again, it's an important data point to have. Here's the good one for you. The parent company, they're owned by Follicorp. And because they're owned by Follicorp, uh, that means that they have a larger parent that they're responsible for. So if they, if you go to the interview and they're like, do you know, are, are we part of a larger organization? You can say, yes, I know that you're owned by Follett Corp. And what is Follett Corp? Well, we'll, we'll find out who they are in, in a little bit. Um, last day updated on January, 2021. If I click this, a box is gonna pop up and it's just gonna say basically that some data point on here was updated. I don't know which one it doesn't tell us, but that at least something was updated in January, 2021. Uh, year established, they were established in 1963, square footage, they're not a home business, their credit rating is excellent, they are a federal contractor, we saw that up above when it, uh, when it, when it told us, you know, their uh, SIC codes. This is the only thing you would have to pay for through this service is to buy their credit report, but you're not really going to need to know that if you're interviewing with them because I don't see that question coming up and chances are if it was you would know right away if you needed that credit report or not for interviewing at this location or any location but it's there if you want to buy it but again you're under no obligation to do so. Um, going down here we can look at their management directory. Again this being a snapshot you know it tells us who's the name of the executive, what's their title, their gender and their ethnicity. Being that, again, this is a snapshot, I would really encourage you to go to LinkedIn or go on Google and type in this person's name and say, Brett Fra Bart Frazier, Baker and Taylor, see if you can find their LinkedIn profile and see if their LinkedIn profile or just any profile reflects if they are still at this company. Because again, something could have changed between when uh, Data Axle last updated it to today. So again, you know, this is good information to know because maybe you will be interviewing with Corinne and you know that her last name is spelled Legacy and not say like Legacy. But again, you really want to, again, look up this information, look it up through other sources and again, verify, are they, you know, are they there? Is this their exact title? But again, this gives you an idea of names to look up because if you went to Baker and Taylor's website, chances are they're not gonna list any of these names and especially not at the moments location. Company news is here. I'm not, uh, the company news is, is a double-edged sword because with company news, and I'll go ahead and load this. Um, company news, the way this works is it's done through Bing and basically it's taking the words Baker and Taylor and coming up with news reports and those news reports could be on anything which has the word Baker in it or the word Taylor. And so that's why you're going to look at these news articles and be like, oh my, this is anything to do with this company. You're right, it doesn't. That's why I would encourage you to use another resource on that alpha list called ABI Inform, which is a business uh, collection of business journals, business uh, newspapers, and all and, and trade journals, and so on. Use Baker and Taylor and ABI Inform to learn more about them rather than this company news option. Because again, you might find stuff here that relates to them, but a lot of this stuff you just don't. So I'm just going to collapse this. Because they're a private company, there's no stock symbol, stock exchange, none. But at least you know that. So if they trick you with a question that says, how did our stock do recently? You can go to them and be like, I know you don't have any stock because you're a private company. And maybe you couldn't know that just by looking up Baker and Taylor's website because they, they may or may not say that. But again, that's one more thing you know that someone else who's interviewing for this position may not. Business expenditures, as it says, these expenditures are an estimated annual expense. This just gives you an idea 
of you know what are probably some of their you know expenses again because they're a private company are they doing over 10 million dollars in payroll and benefits maybe i'd say look at that number critically and say well maybe this is just you know the aggregator is, you know the estimate has gone way overboard but again it's just some general ideas of how they feel that you know that how they're spending their expenditures and for all i know maybe they are doing over 10 million dollars in payroll and benefits they could be i know a lot of uh you know some companies that's where they spend the bulk of their money is on payroll and benefits so maybe this is true or maybe it's not but again it's just again just estimates of what it is is what they're spending on each of these categories Again, because this is a private company, you can look at this sales volume by year, and maybe they did have a blockbuster 2013 through 2016. But again, being a private company, they don't have to report their financials. It's all just estimated. So again, this is just something you have to look at critically. Um, but just know that these numbers are here if you want a general idea of what Baker, of what Data Axel thinks that they've been doing. But again, you just have to look at that critically. Employee size by year. You know, this could be accurate, 870 employees. Um, chances are, because they're a warehouse, they probably don't have a lot of turnover in terms of like losing a lot of positions, but just know, again, they're a private company. They're not reporting how many employees they have. So that's why this is a straight line. Um, business history could be helpful too. Uh, it tells you where they've been located as well as any of these individual links under company name. I could click one of these and be taken to a snapshot of that company as it was in 2003, 2004, 2008, so on. At a glance, I can see that they were always out of Gladiola Street since at least 2003. So one more thing you know that you would not find in a Google report is have they, how long have they been at their current location? Well, they could have been here earlier than this, but at least you know in 2003, which is as far back as the data goes for Reference USA, you know that they were out on Gladiola Street. They listed a different executive for the thing, but you can click on this and look through that just like you could this current record. Um, and I, I'm not gonna go into these last three. UCC filings, that's pretty much has to deal with money lending. You may find something there, you may not. Maybe you find it useful, maybe you won't. Nearby businesses, that just means who's near them. It doesn't mean booksellers. It just means, you know, maybe there's a gas station nearby or something. And finally, this last one, I will expand the competitor's report. The competitor's report is not an exhaustive list and may not even be their main competitors. But basically it's saying based off of those codes, those SIC or NAICS codes, as well as possibly some location involved, because all of these are pretty close to us. Um, it may say to yourself, well, okay, it feels that these are some of their competitors, but they may not be. Um, you just, again, you just have to do more research through the advanced search module, which I'm about to get to after I cover one final feature. And if you wanted to uh, download this uh, report, you could into an Excel file or a different type of file format. You can also choose this print option, and then you can print off this report to have with you, and you can just hold on to as you're doing, again, more research using other, other methods or just have it with you to remember before you go into the interview. The, the thing I'll show you though, that I sort of, that we talked about briefly is, okay, they're a parent company of Follett Corporation, but is it possible that even this branch of Baker and Taylor, like where are their headquarters? Is this their headquarters? Well, the way I would know, is this their headquarters or not? Is this corporate tree option, which is down here at the bottom right? Um, what I can do with that is, if I wanted to go up a level in this company to at least, you know, maybe to their local headquarters or else their total or else their regional headquarters or even their country headquarters, I can click this little up arrow and I'll jump up. If they're the, at the top and I want to go down a level, then there should there, there may be a down facing arrow or there may be both. But if I want to see their whole corporate structure at a glance, I won't choose this arrow. I will choose this little map, which is right here. And when I click that, I am then taken to this master list of who owns who. And so here we see highlighted, this is the moments location, okay? They are a B. What is a B? Well, all the, all the, 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 um, the listings of what all these words mean uh, is up here at the top. So B stands for branch. What about SU? SU means it's a subsidiary of a US parent. That means that this is the headquarters of Baker and Taylor. And they're out in Charlotte, North Carolina. 
uh, and so I could click on this, which I won't do, but I could click on that and then I could see information about where they are headquartered. And so when you go into the job interview, you can say to them, well, I know that your parent company is out here in Charlotte, North Carolina, or again, do more research, verify that that's true, but you know, they are out in North Carolina in Charlotte and chances are this is accurate. Um, but again, you can look at that more closely. Now you can know, go even a step higher and say, you're headquartered in Charlotte, but I know that you are owned by Follett Corporation and they are based out in Westchester. And so I could click on Follett Corporation and then I could read through their company profile to learn more about them. You know, again, location info, job listings, so on and so forth. Again, they are another private company as indicated by type of business. So again, they don't have to publicly post their financials, but again, you could just read through this and see that their corporate sales volume is, to, is estimated to be over a billion dollars. And if you want a fun little story, Follett Corporation, if I did my research right through other sources, they originated out in Wheaton. And then, uh, and then actually looking at their uh, corporate history, it doesn't go back to their Wheaton days because that was a long time ago, but it looks like in 2003 to 2013, they were based out of River Grove. So again, that's one more piece of information you know about them before they moved to Westchester is they're out in River Grove. And, it, and so again, I will just quickly contrast that with a public company by searching, by doing new search before I, uh, quick, before I do the advanced search. So I'll just contrast that to Best Buy, who I know is a public company. So I'm gonna go and click them. I'm gonna change the sales one to be corporate tree because I don't wanna deal with the individual stores. I wanna go straight to the top. So I click the corporate tree, click the little map. Here's Best Buy. They're, they're, uh, they're a public company, PC, good. They're based out in Minneapolis. I worked at Best Buy for a number of years in a, in a, in a local st uh, retail store. So I know they're out in Minneapolis. I'm gonna, you can see there's a lot more detail here in terms of their codes and stuff, a longer explanation, more data points here. Um, uh, so they do 43 billion in revenue. Uh, other codes, their Fortune 1000 ranking, they're at number 74. Again, they're a public company, so this is accurate. This data was actually, this one of these data points was actually updated this month already, even though we're only a day into it. Um, uh, various executives, but what I really wanna call your attention to is their financials. So you can see here, they've got a ticker symbol. And I, I glanced over it, but up at the top, it did say they were a public company. Um, they got a ticker symbol. Here's their stock information. Their 10K is their annual report that they have to file every year. So you can actually view that report if you want and read through it and read all about their financials and other important data that the government as well as their stockholders need to know. Again, these expenditures are all estimated, but, they, but what's important though is their business size history. This is all based off of their annual reports that they've been doing. And you can read through some of these older ones. You may find more current ones elsewhere, but they at least have their 2011 annual report. But you can see this number, this data is a lot more varied. And because they're a public company, a lot more accurate because again, they have to publicly report their sales volume as part of their you know, reporting to the Security and Exchanges Commission, as well as to their shareholders. So again, this is this data is you can see it's a lot more dynamic and a lot more accurate. Employee size by year, this could be very well be accurate too. Although it does look like it leveled off here, maybe you want to find out why in case maybe this isn't correct. But again, this is just a good. This just shows you the difference between a public company and a private company, where again this data is much more dynamic. So that was showing you a public company. And, uh, and now I'll show you the, the, that was the basic search. Now I'll just show you a little bit about how the advanced search works. So I'm gonna do new search. And again, that was the quick search. Now I'm gonna go to the advanced search. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And what the advanced search does is, is it helps me if I'm trying to find a list of prospects or companies that I'm interested in interviewing for. So for starters, the first thing that pops up is, do I want verified businesses and unverified? Or maybe I just like, you know, let's just stick to the verified. I don't want to take any chances that with an unverified business. You could 
you could do that, or you could just choose one or the other, um, and so on and so forth. So there's 61 million verified and unverified businesses. But if I undo this check mark box, there's, I believe it said 15 million verified. Now, what I've got here on the left hand column, though, is, is options that I can add to my center screen in order to work on my search. So the one that's most important to us is going to be this business type option where I could in, bring in SIC keywords and major industry groups. This searching for the codes is helpful. Again, if you say to yourself, well, I know what I wanna do. I want to be an administrative assistant. So I can search all SIC codes or I could just search the primary ones of SIC or NAICS because we saw earlier that the, the primary code is what they feel they do the most, that's their bread and butter, but I could search any of these for SIC, and then I'll get a list of, of SIC. So I typed in administrative assistant. In this case, it broke it up by exact matches of all these different ones. And then I believe further down is partial matches, but you may say to yourself, well, I want to be a financial assistant. So I can click this. It's now appeared down below. I can click more than one if I want to. And then I have a nice long list of them. But if I want to see to myself, well, okay, financial assistants, how many records do they have in their database of financial assistants? I could view the results, but at a glance, I can click update count. And I can see that there are 9,000 financial assistants that they have listed across the entire country. Now, the major industry group section, which I also checked, is just useful for browsing. So you can browse from a major category, like transportation. I could click this and then see all the transportation that's also an administrative assistant. But given that financial assistants are not transportation assistants, I wouldn't be surprised if I clicked update count and went to zero. But I could use that besides this. And what I can do here is I can click these little plus buttons, like here under um, public administration. I click this plus. Oh, so maybe I want to try. So sorry. Sorry, I used to remember which one library was under, and now I've forgotten, but that's okay. Uh, but basically, yeah, I can click public administration. I can click administration, human resources. Again, I'm clicking these little pluses to go further down the chain. And I can say to myself, well, I wanna be an administrator in public health. I wanna find those positions. And here I've got a listing of those. I can click one of these, more than one. And again, click update count. And again, I just click these little pluses to uh, get these to go down lower. If I wanna go the other way, I can click this little plus became a minus. Now I click this minus, minus, I'm back to where I was, minus. So again, major industry groups, which I checked right here, this is a good way to browse through different industry groups in order to find, again, positions that I'm interested in interviewing for. Now, I'm not going that route, so I'm just going to uncheck that, and now that's gone away. But here's where here's where the, the good part is, though, is, is the location options here under geography. And I won't cover the rest of these are here. You can click on them and explore them on your own time. But what's really nice is you can do a map-based search, a city state search, a metro area, a zip code, or what I like is this radius search option. So when I click radius search, what that lets me do is I can put in my zip code or my address, and I can then say, here's how far I'm willing to commute in order to find a place near me. So you may say to yourself, well, I'm not commuting 100 miles. I'm not commuting 20 miles. I'm going to willing to, at most willing to commute 10 miles. So if I put in 10 and update the count, I see there are 50 companies who are uh, who are financial assistants who are within 10 miles of of 60188 as my zip code. At this point, I can click View Results, and here they are. I'm not sure how they're initially organized, but again, I can organize themselves by company name. Here's where they are, Charles Schwab, a bunch of banks. Because, And if I wanted to, again, I can click multiple records as I'm going down the list that I may be interested in reading through. 
And then if I click one of these, again, it's the same profile. I won't go into it, but here's what I was saying earlier. This is page one of six, and this is page one. And when I click this second page, I've now tabbed over to advanced capital management. Click this rightmost arrow. I'm now at Bellis and Associates. Again, I can click the back arrow now to go back to where I was. I can click the number one, and then I'm back to this. So again, that is just some of the many features that are possible under this advanced search option. So I'd encourage you on your own time, you know, click one, read through these at a glance. Again, you don't have to use all of these in your search, but you can click different ones. Like maybe you don't wanna deal with any pub, private companies. You could click this and then you could choose which one you wanted. And they've also got these nice search tips options as well above any of these boxes that you can click where it offers you advice. Like for example, public and private company. It says to include both types of companies, do not check either box. So that was under search tips. Again, if I wanted this one to go away, I can either uncheck it here, I can click this remove option and then it's gone. So again, I encourage you use the advanced search on your own time. And then, uh, and then, well, finally show you though is, so when I was viewing the results, there was an option to save my search. If I click save search, it's going to want me to create an account or sign in. And I will just go ahead and sign in. And assuming I remembered my password, great, here I am. Okay, save search. I can create a name for this search, uh, financial, I can't, institutions, or whatever the name of, of, the, uh, of what I had done to do this search. So this is completely wrong, but that's okay. Institutions, 10 miles near me. And I'll go ahead and click save. This has been saved. Now, how do I get to my saved uh, searches? Well, I'll just click this data axle option up here at the top. And then you're gonna notice this screen now looks different than what it did because this is now at a glance, I can, or at a quick search, I can type in things like Best Buy. So that pops up. I can type in Minnesota. And again, the, it, 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 it's searching different fields, but I, I stay the state of Minnesota and then I can do my search that way. Um, and this is sort of like the basic search feature, or I can click this build a list option under US businesses. And then that'll take me again back to the advanced search feature where I was. Um, and then I can build things that way. Now, going back to what I said earlier, here are my saved lists, which is down here. Here's that financial institutions one, whichever my mouse over it, it says what it was. Libraries within a 10 mile radius, great. Carroll Stream Public Library. So in this case, I did a search for, for two lists and one individual company. And here is the Carroll Stream Public Library from that larger search. So again, I click on that and this will tell me what it thinks it knows about the Carroll Stream Public Library. So again, I showed you quite a bit, but again, all I, and then when I'm done, I'm, I can click this sign out option, which is up here. So again, just to briefly say at a glance what we did today, we use data reference, we use data axle, aka reference USA, aka reference solutions um, to examine their US businesses module. When I knew the name of the individual company, I typed it in here and I got a list of results. And then I found the one that was specific to the location that I was interviewing at. But if I was trying to come up with a list of companies that are in the area who I might be interested in figuring out, do they have any job postings? Um, I can, again, I just use the advanced search feature to create a list of those organizations. And then I can either look through the Indeed listings that they had there, or I, what I really encourage you to do is find this company's website, uh, you know, learn more about them as well that way, and then see through them, do they have any job listings? And again, what more can I learn about them? Because Data Axle, again, is just one piece and part of the larger puzzle of doing your company research. So again, thank you everybody for coming out here today. I will go ahead and stop the recording. And if you have any questions, please type them into the chat or if you'd rather be unmuted, I can do that too. Otherwise that's it for today. And again, thank you everybody for coming out.